So I read somewhere that black beans make a blue dye, and since I'm always looking for blue dyes, I decided I'd try dyeing paper for a notebook. After hearing about the dye potential of black beans, I dipped some kitchen towels into the water that I used to cook those beans, and got these shades of purple. From what I understand, the heat of cooking changes the color, so in order to get a blue hue, I'll do a cold dye process. For this I'm using black beans, obviously. Distribute to get an even layer at the bottom and then add water. The layer of water should be at least an inch above the beans, so that once the beans swell, there'll still be enough room for the things you want to dye. So I let that sit overnight. If you're wondering why I didn't just drain the beans, well, I heard that agitating the beans makes the color cloudy and grayish. So to get as blue a color as possible, the beans stay. I'm using standard copier paper and I'm dyeing one sheet at a time. I took my time putting in the sheet and submerging it, so as not to agitate the pot and cause cloudying. Once submerged, I let the paper soak up dye for 15 minutes. When taking the sheet out, be very careful, soggy paper is extremely fragile. Lay out the wet paper on a towel or a couple of layers of fabric and let it dry. And get started on the second sheet. For the second sheet, I thought I'd experiment. I wanted to see if not submerging the sheet and just allowing it to soak up the dye in its own good time makes any difference, and it doesn't. At least, not that I noticed one anyways. Time in the dye does make a difference though, up to a point. A half hour seems the perfect time to allow the sheet to soak up the dye. Anything beyond that made really a minimal difference in the intensity of the color. I left one sheet in the dye overnight and even that wasn't much more intensely blue than any of the other ones. Going one by one is quite time intensive, but dunking more than one sheet at a time just turns into a mess. Sheets stick together and they rip and it's, it, it's just a mess. One by one is definitely the way to go. I did this over one weekend and set a timer to remind myself to go back every half hour and take off the sheet and put in the next one. <laughs> and because I chose a blue fabric to dry the paper on, I decided to give you a white paper for a better comparison. I am extremely happy with that blue. The dye didn't just stick to the paper, it also stained my cuticles. In a way that took half a week of hand washing and doing dishes to get rid of. Maybe next time I'll wear gloves. And that's the result. A very pretty, at least I think so, very pretty blue stained paper that I'll now turn into a notebook. Okay, stop playing with the pretty paper. For the cover, I'm using this wallpaper, which I love. And to sew the notebook together, I'm using sewing thread and a chenille needle. Chenille needles are quite thick and sturdy, so they can go through the paper and have a sharp point, which makes the whole thing easier.
Alright, using all 12 sheets in once gets a little bit thick and out of shape. Mood. So I'm dividing them into 4 lots of 4. And because I don't own bookmaking tools, I'm using the side of a jar to flatten the edge. Get out a ruler. The light is reflecting in the most annoying way, so I'll cover the tabletop. Marking the spots the needles need to go through. and sew them together. Alright, insights achieved! Now to measure the right size cover I'll need. I'm covering it in book binding glue. Book binding glue remains a little bit flexible even when dry and works a lot better for bendy projects than, say, wood glue. Make sure no glue spilled out onto the inner pages of the notebook and remove any excess. Then weigh it down with a couple of books to force it to dry flat. And here's the finished product. I'm super happy with it and look forward to using it. Thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed this video, why not subscribe?